Joining me now, my friend Carol Markowitz. She's a columnist with the New York Post. Carol, look, let's begin at the beginning, Bill de Blasio. Now, everybody knows I despise Bill de Blasio probably more than any other politician on the planet. <laughs> That's true. Well, you have to live under him. You have to live under him. And now, before we get to all the vaccine mandate stuff, I'm seeing rumors today he's going to run for governor. Carol, please tell me this isn't possible. Um, it's possible. He's running. He's for sure running for governor. Uh, I mean, what else has he got going on, right? Um, but I don't think he's going to win. I think there uh, has been a shift since New York City elected him twice as mayor. People realize he's incompetent. Um, even like the communists I know think he's like the worst and can't get anything done. He really has been sort of a unifying force in New York City that everybody just sort of thinks he was one of the, you know, the worst mayors we've ever had and that he has no role in future uh, political office. I mean, just look what happened when he ran for president and he ran the most like anti-Trump campaign, which should have gotten him somewhere in the Democratic Party at that point. And yet he went absolutely nowhere and it was a pathetic flame out. I, I just don't get why he wants to run. So I live in Park Slope, which is his neighborhood. Um, he is constantly like hanging out outside this like coffee shop or this restaurant in Park Slope. Everybody knows those are his favorite spots. I see him, you know, 2 p.m., middle of the day, just like with his pods in, like hanging out outside, not doing any work, just chilling. Like, I just don't get like, why are you even running for governor? Like, go live your dream. Come back to Park Slope. Hang out outside your, your favorite coffee shop. Enjoy, you know, why, why do we need to put, go through this? Carol, I, I do have to ask, because I have other stuff I wanted to get to, but I, I really, you just made me think of this. He runs for president, he flames out. And yeah. I'm going to be as nice as I can here. You know what a nice person I am, Carol. You're so nice. Setting his, setting his politics aside, mm -hmm. he might be the least likable human being I've ever seen on the planet. Yeah. He just is kind of a nasty, unlikable oaf. Who you, right. you just you see the guy and you don't want to be within 20 feet of him. And yet he did get elected to the most important city in the world, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. How did that happen? So it's interesting because the first race, uh, he was just sort of the leftist um, among a, a field of sort of moderate to left people. Uh, and New York had had Republican or independent leadership for a very, very long time. It had been two terms of Giuliani followed by three terms of Bloomberg. And the Democrats in New York were sort of like, let's take a chance on like a full on socialist. And they did. The second time he ran, he ran his campaign against Donald Trump. Donald Trump was president. He uh, ran an entirely like Trump. You hate Trump? Vote for me. Trump, 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 Trump. Vote for me. And he won. Um, I think it, a lot of other situations, there would have been a primary. He would have um, lost. I, I think in a lot of other cases, if Donald Trump wasn't president at that time, Bill de Blasio does not win a second term. But I also, I like that you say he's so super unlikable because as you know, every time anybody says that about a woman, it's sexist. So in the future, I'm going to point to Jesse <laughs> Kelly calling Bill de Blasio like the most unlikable human being in the whole world and show how, you know, it's not just women. Well, Carol, you know I'm equal opportunity with being rude to everybody. I, I, I don't yeah. discriminate between men and women. All right, all right. Th now, I do have this. Let's get to the task at hand. Here is communist Bill de Blasio today. 92% of the city workforce is now vaccinated as a result of this mandate. The vast majority of our city employees and the vast majority of our firefighters are doing the right thing. But the ones who are playing a game, uh, they're going to have to suffer some consequences because this is unacceptable. Gonna have to suffer some consequences, Carol. These people, the way they speak to us now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's crazy because I think, especially with fire departments, they do so much more than just put out fires. You know, I had a fireman send me this whole thing where like, if you're choking, if you're if you're stuck in your car, if your cat is in a tree, if you know, if your uh, CO2 alarm goes off, all of this kind of stuff is, is firemen, they, they come to your rescue. Garbage is piling up all over the city because the sanitation department is under these same mandate rules. Uh, we're losing police at a time where why would anybody in their right mind and want to be a police officer in a major city anywhere in America. And we have we're having these losses really unnecessarily because look, you could be 
for the vaccine, and I am, um, and still realize that even vaccinated people can spread COVID-19. So these mandates simply make no sense. If they made some iota of sense, I might be on the other side of this. I really would. Um, but it completely does not make medical sense to me to, to mandate a vaccine that you can still spread the virus even if you get the vaccine. So we're, we're really in a dangerous moment in New York City. I think that uh, we're, we're going to feel it very soon. Okay, you mentioned feel it very soon. I'm, I'm glad you brought up what's coming because New York, sadly, now leads the way for most of the country. I don't think people understand, Carol, because I'm getting these same emails from NYPD guys and firemen. I don't think people understand exactly what it means when you call 911 and they're just not sending anybody or they tell you it'll be an hour. Hey, hide under your bed and good luck. And that's coming for New York. Yeah, that's absolutely coming. I think, again, the problem is that Bill de Blasio is from an extremely safe part of New York City. He's from Park Slope. We have barely any crime here. Like It's like, oh, somebody's cell phone got stolen, and that's like a week-long story around here. Um, and that's really the problem, that he really doesn't understand that there are areas that count on the support of police. They count on the fire department to be responsive. Um, I, I think he lives in a really rarefied state and thinks that everybody does. And again, we're, we are going to feel it. The other thing is, and you know, I hope to be wrong, but I think New York is heading for a COVID spike. I think we had one last year right around this time. At today, we have more cases than we had a year ago before any of the vaccines came out. And I, th I really do think we're heading for a winter spike in November, December, January, you know, into February like last year. And I wonder what we will have won when we don't have a, a functioning fire department, a police department, sanitation department, and yet we still have these spikes and these mandates will have done nothing. Hey, thanks so much for watching The First on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me, like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more of me.